like this because I'm going to Todd Haynes' movie opening tonight, which is going to be exciting. And I've been Todd since I'm 1989, so we, we grew up well, as we say. But um, we're in the lobby of the public theater. This is Watch for Work. For those of you who are new, should I explain to you what it is? Or do you just want to, that'd be great. <laughs> yes, that would be great. And those of you who have been here before, just say, no, it isn't. <laughs> So uh, I'm sitting in the park, we're in the lobby of the public theater. Watch me work is, it's about you. So the me and the title is you, okay? So basically what it is, is we work for 20 minutes, and then on anything we want, and those of you watching online are working along with us, and then we talk for the remainder of the time about your work and your creative process, okay? So if you forget, and ask me a question about my work, I'll think about you. Okay, I'm really here for that. And you can try and see if I can manage it more. But, um, so we work for 20 minutes and then we just talk about our creative process, basically. So any questions you have, all questions are welcome. You know, if you're having a, a, an issue, a block, a, a difficult time in your work, or you want to get happy about having completed a draft, you want some applause or something. Uh, so we do that. And Yubika is going to tell us, those folks online, she's going to tell us how to get in touch via Twitter. Yeah, so if you can't join us in the lobby of the public, I live tweet the event, and you can tweet in any questions, and the hashtag is new play. It's Watch Me Work SLP. Do you want to say it again? Get, get close oh, yeah. to the mic, watch. Sure. So there you go. It's hashtag new play, and tweet at Watch Me Work SLP. Excellent. I was told the other night that you have to kiss the mic. Oh, wow, it's very intimate. Well, that's the idea. <laughs> Intimacy is the mother of all invention, actually. Right, yeah, right. Okay. Um, before I forget, I have to give a shout out to Chester. Um, I got a tweet uh, uh, the other day that Chester, that I had mentioned in uh, Chester's, on Chester's Twitter account. He is an employee at Drama Books, and he is reading Father Cousin's The Wars, and he is a Pomeranian. So the dog is reading my book. It's great. Thank you, Chester. Um, yeah. Yay! Hey, you know. I thought it was cute. He re I didn't know dogs could read. <laughs> he laughed, like, oh. What else do I have to say today? Nothing. Durham's in the house. We'll see how that goes. And uh, so, uh, yeah. So I didn't bring my real time. I brought my my phone. So let's do 20 minutes, right? And me and Yubika are going to keep the time, so y'all don't have to. Ding 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 ding. It is James Bond. Okay, here we go.
don't come to my home. someone was reading yes and I was questioning if I should change the ending or so yes um, so the, the critique I got was that overall it was good or consistent or something but it didn't have enough um, I don't know what the right term is but I guess enough things 
happening, I guess that would make it more provocative. And I kind of didn't know what to do with that per se, because I, I thought it was provocative, but not in a sense of for, for shock value. Right. So I didn't know how much of that to take to heart. Okay. Um, I, I haven't looked at it since. Right. I haven't read it since with that in right. mind. But I kind of don't know if I should humble myself and right. go back to the writer's room or right. if I should just say. Pause, pause, push yeah. pause. So you're pushing pause now. So Crystal wrote a, has written many plays, but so she wrote a play, she wrote a draft uh, of this play that she's been working on for a while and she gave it to a reader, one reader. Yeah, this, well, yeah, this, this was, yeah, not the one that I've been working on. Yeah. Exactly, right. And the person gave her some feedback that she's not sure about, the the feedback, right? She's not sure if it really makes sense to her, the feedback. Um, what I mean, I guess it's specific, were they really specific in their, like, what might be and, and why? Um, the, the specific I got was basically like, it, it almost seemed like, oh, just make it more rated R. <laughs> like put right. more, you know, make the father figure more evil or, but I didn't write it that way because the, it's a dual character. One of the characters is dual. He plays the father, but he plays a character, an actor playing a father. Right. And so it's kind of like this good and evil kind of flip right. Right. switch right. with okay. this guy. And I guess the idea was make the father who isn't that other character right. more evil in reality as opposed to what you see on stage, like the play within the play. Right. Um, you know, the same thing with the male, uh, main female character to make her more gross. But I remember when I said something beforehand in several, um, several meetings ago, uh, classes ago, where I had been given feedback about her being unlikable um, mm -hmm. and I kind of don't care if she's likable or not right. it's can you watch it you know can you right. listen to it so he was kind of saying to make her even more like I guess to base and unlikable yeah so he's saying make her more likable so yeah but I guess when that comes up so just to, I mean I don't know your source I don't know who's giving this up but there's a general note that that sounds like and sometimes we you, I've heard this note given many times in many different ways. You know, don't be afraid to to sort of dirty up your characters. You know, because we, we become attached to them, we adore them, we love them, we want them to succeed. Maybe we want them to become likable, or we just don't. We're just not ready to go there with them yet. So there's a, a note. You know, don't be afraid to mess up their hair. For example, you know, to improve her. That's a, that's kind of general, that's common note that you can get. Um, and sometimes people, sometimes that will do things like um, up the stakes, right? So sometimes if you have her, like, um, you know, she is a serial jaywalker, right, you laugh. You know what I mean? Okay, that's interesting. She jaywalked in Los Angeles. Okay. See, that's already it's different. Right. CJ yeah. walks in New York. Eh. CJ walks in Los Angeles. Hmm. Right? Okay. Already something. Let's say she's a shoplifter. Right? Wow. Oh, already. So you, so you make her quote unquote less likable. You know? Or you just you just kind of up the stakes because getting arrested for shoplifting is what they do. Right. Right. Um, say she's a shoplifter of high-end stuff. Oh, say she's a someone who steals money from old ladies. She's a purse snatcher. You, you see what she's saying? So, maybe, so in a way, you know, let's make her less likable is a tricky note because that is something that is depending on the reaction of an unseen audience. But I know, like, up the stakes, Make it more resonant. Create more drama in the moment by getting your characters messing up their hair a little bit is something that maybe you can work with now. So have you taken the maximize the advantage of every dramatic choice that you make? I thought I did. Okay, well then maybe, then maybe you have. Maybe you have. Maybe they want to see a different 
play. You know, you have to think about that too. But but um, you can also have another leader. You know, like when you go to the doctor, get a second opinion, get a third opinion. If everybody's saying kind of sort of the same thing, then take the note to heart. And if the second reader says, no, I think this is, wow, this is pretty corrupt, you know, then, then pause, maybe get a third reader's interest in the team. Okay? So you're right to push pause. It doesn't sound like, you know, just because you get notes doesn't mean you have to dive in right away and do the right that somebody suggests. Right. Regardless of who they are. Okay. I know you have a lot of questions. You have plenty of time to answer. Thank you. that I've kind of been trying to not avoid writing about, but it's like things that I feel like I need to work out the details of. It's like a dystopic play. Right. And I've kind of shied away from delving as deeply as I can into shows like that because inevitably people are asking me a million questions that I don't know the answers to yet. Um, like and questions about creating a, a, a seamless reality to the, the world you're creating? Right. Like, well, yeah, questions like, oh, well, how far in the future are we? I don't right. know yet. Right. right. Yeah. I see. I see. Stuff like that. So what I'm trying to do to avoid, like, the other play of mine that you read, that was a play that I just straight out wrote, and then there was a ton of questions on how the world happens. And so what I want to do is, I know I'm not going to be able to prevent any, I'm not going to be able to prevent any of the, you know, not like I'm going to be prevent questions at all, but what I want to do is kind of manage the world as best I can, as best I can um, on the front end, so I'm not untangling a lot of wires on the back end. Yeah. So, but it's terrifying because it's like now I feel like I need to research first before I write, but that's not how I like starting a project. Right. <laughs> I love this, this bathroom work. I love it. Because, you know, inevitably, the questions that you guys have are the questions that we all have over and over and over and over until we die and probably after that. Right. So, so Stacy's saying she feels like she needs to do some research, perhaps, before she gets writing, so that she can sort of have clarity not eliminate questions, but have clarity for herself, right? But she hates doing research before she writes. Why do you hate? You know, you always talk about that. Oh, you don't hate it. You don't hate it. But what it is is that I don't know when to stop and just write the damn play. Because what I'll do is I'll endlessly, like in the, in the since that initial question and answer session, I have read 1984. Fahrenheit 451, I'm digging all over the place trying to find anything about dystopic societies, trying to figure out where I want mine to jump off. And it's like, I don't want to get so caught up in that, that when it comes time for me to actually sit down and write, that it just doesn't happen. Right. So it sounds like Stacy has a boundary issue. Okay, right, so you have a boundary issue. So what you're saying is, the way to protect yourself is to not do anything. Like dating. The way to protect yourself against something is to not believe it. I'm like, just stay at home by myself. <laughs> <laughs> you are being my life. I know. I, 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 I'm right? Okay? I know, because I, I tell you, every time that we talk about, we all have this thing. So I'm going to stay at home. I'm not going to think anybody's going to get me with me. Okay. That's one way. The thing you don't. You don't give a chance, you still have a chance of getting there. Okay, so you ask yourself, where do you want to be? I want to be there, right? So I gotta give myself an opportunity. So that means that I have to do this thing that I haven't maybe successfully done in the past. I have to create some boundaries. You can see I stood up when I said that. You guys, you guys, it's about standing up for yourself. For yourself. Right? Okay. And knowing that. Here I am. Right? So, a good way to create boundaries in writing is to give yourself a time limit. I will do research 
finished on this project for the next what? Probably two more weeks max. Two more weeks max. Okay. So two more weeks max is what? The thirtieth? Yeah. It's such a good day, the thirtieth. <laughs> Cause I get a prize on the thirtieth. And so the thirtieth, yeah, like yo. If you're still doing your thing, I would be calling you with my prize. <laughs>
like, should I just edit as I go and just like wait till the end and then like chop off like shaft it? I don't know. Right. Okay. I think I'm going to do the Prince Alexis and Brian Ice Cream because she's really proud of herself. She's going, going, going. She's heard that the, the, um, the note that Brian Ice Cream plays that can be enough white space on that. I think there's enough white space in screen writing already. Um, anyway, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, but uh, they don't, no, the note's about writing. They just leave enough space because the character, it's not a dialogue for reading, it's a visual medium, and that's, an, um, that's a very smart thing to keep in mind. So her question is, should she edit as she goes? Should she edit as she goes, or should she write the whole thing and when she's done, start chopping it? What do you think? I can't. What do you think the answer is? I get really carried away with long writing, but I feel like that's the answer. Just like, go, 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 go. It is. <laughs> yes! Go, 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 go. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Editing as you write is a real wonderful way to feel like yeah, please, it is, yeah. It's Nirvana's go <laughs> No, really, not really, I'm sure. It is, it is, it is. There are two, there are two kinds of courage. There's writing, there's rewriting. Write it, and then if you need some space, some more white space on the page, cut without mercy. Have you ever done this exercise that you perform? The writing, rewriting exercise? Yeah. How much for time? We're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll do it. Okay. Well, really quickly. We'll do it really quickly. Now, since we have done this, I've done it this summer. Um, so, writing. Uh, do you like uh, the forest or the jungle better? We've done this. Forest or the jungle? Jungle. Jungle. Great. Okay. Okay. So, you're right. When you're writing, when you are in your writing mind, you're sitting in a jungle with a canopy overhead. Anything goes. Everything grows. Like that. Right? Okay. So that's when you're writing. That's what it feels like. Right? Okay. So when you're rewriting or editing, um, what's your, what color? Uh, brown, gray, black, or white? Pick one. Gray. Gray. And what's um, the song that's in your head right now? What? Go. Shit. Shit. Um, when I fall in love. There we go. When I fall in love. When I fall in love. Okay, will be forever that one? That was that little thing of? Now it is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, which one were you thinking of? I, I, I said 1984 because that's just like the one oh. that kept being in my head. Fine, 1984. Okay, so then here it is. So here it is. So when you were rewriting, right? Raise your favorite color of, of those colors, and 1984 is your song that you're thinking of. And you are riding, riding on a gray horse. In your hand, which hand are you? Yes, right. You have a sword of discrimination, not racial discrimination, but the ability to tell what is and what ain't. And the song that came before is playing. And you're cutting everything that does not have to be there. And that's your new one. Okay? And as you cut what doesn't have to be there, the, the plants say, you know, they fall to the ground and they find their place their roots and grow into something else if they should. Right? So that's really right. So you don't want to do this two activities at the same time. So right now you're sitting in the garden in the jungle and everything's growing and everything's good. Cut later. Okay? Okay. Diane. Okay. Um I have a show that's written, done. Yeah, it's been rewritten. Yeah, at the point of trying to shop it around, right. get it produced. And I had a meeting today Great. with um, a friend, but also someone who does producing. Great. And um, so one of my concerns is, it's an, I'm a dancer, choreographer, writer. Cool. It's an interactive dance play in two acts. Okay. And I'm a tango dancer, and oh, I use wow. tango and salsa in a lot of my, to tell a story. Oh, fantastic. My concern is that over the course of three nights that the show takes place, there's the on-stage and off-stage life of this, of this dance troupe. Right. They do salsa, they do tango, and there's a magician also in his assistant. Oh, cool. That's cool. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I have not seen a show like this before. Anyway, I have, I don't choreograph the show yet, but I describe the show, so I have long stage directions. Right. 
And so far, people who have read it are pretty much, you know, they know about dance. Right. So my concern is when I hand it in to someone who's a potential producer who doesn't know that much about dance, and people have said, wow, you've really taken a lot of time with these stage directions. They're well written, they're descriptive. How can I make them more interesting? I, I just, I'm concerned that they're going to be like, you know, like with the stage directions, because they can't see the show yet. Do you right. know what I mean? Right. They see the show within the show as an actual show on stage. Right. So I'm concerned that my stage directions of that show are going to be like boring to them, or just like they won't be able to stick with it. Right, right. That's a concern I have. My, my opinion. So, uh, you've written this on a, you can hear it from her trans question, yeah? She's written, she's written a, a wonderful play, and it has a lot of dance in it because she's a dancer choreographer, and has a lot of tango and salsa. And right now, the description to, you know, to explain the movement that's going on, they're lengthy stage directions.